Welcome to your eight minutes, thriving hard for thriving life grief tips. Let me ask you, have you ever forgotten something that you want to remember? Many people who come to me uh, grieving ask me actually and share their concern if they are going to start forgetting particularly as they recover from their grief. People usually ask me, so are you, am I going to make them forget their loved ones? And number one, number one, the truth is nobody can stop you from remembering something. In, in general, memories last forever, relationship lasts forever. In other words, if you want to remember something, there is nothing that anyone can do aside from like creating head trauma and amnesia. Otherwise, there's nothing anyone can do to make you forget something, even if it's been many, many years. You might have experienced this where you, uh, you have, let's say a childhood friend that you have not remembered for quite a long time. And then something, something, a song that you hear in the store, you, a, a, a fragrance of something, Somebody say something, and then you you suddenly say you you suddenly remember, and you said, "Oh my gosh, you know that's make me think about that friend in the first grade whom you might not even remember the name anymore, but it suddenly bring back your memory, so nobody can erase your memory, nobody can erase your memory from anything if you do not want to not remember, and for some of us sometimes it's things we don't want to remember and nobody can erase your memory that way either. So so that is one thing. But a lot of time, pe many people, many people who are grieving come to me and they're concerned. They're concerned that as they recover, as they release the pain from grief, that they are going to start forgetting okay. their loved ones. And the truth is actually opposite. The truth is, as you are really, as you able to release pain from your grief, and as you are able to remember to recover from your grief, you actually will be able to remember your loved ones even more. Why? There are a couple reasons for that. The first being your in in everyone, human being, every living being in general, we were created such that we don't experience pain. Nobody really wants to experience pain. Your nervous systems don't want you to experience pain. And so what happens is when you, you are in so much pain, your nervous systems, your subconscious will actually start helping you start to, to forget things. That causes pain. So much so that a lot of time people who come to me, if they come with prolonged grief, in other words, grief that has lasted more than months to years, they reported that they've become forgetful. Why? Because they're in so much pain and their nervous system, their, your subconscious, your fight or flight, your, your self-protection system, try to diminish that pain, to reduce that pain by not helping you not remembering things or forgetting things, but it is not always selective. And then you become forgetful in about everything else. And, and so that's one thing. It's that, that when you are not is in as much pain, your body, your subconscious, your nervous system, suddenly realize that, okay, you do not need to forget things anymore. And then you're able to remember what you want to remember in the regular daily life, as well as with, with, the, with the past experience and with your loved one. And then the other reason, the other reasons that you're actually able to remember better of your loved one and your experience when you release your pain and recover from your grief is that you create the emotional space. When, when we are in a lot of pain, it can create, uh, easily create emotional overwhelm. And, and when we're able to release that pain, it allows a space in your heart and in your mind to be in your emotional body to be able to remember what you would want to remember. And also, and also, when you are able to recover from your grief, 
you you'll be able to shift the focus from loss to love and and accordingly you'll be able to remember more beautiful thing and less of the painful thing and and as you remember to the more of the beautiful events of the beautiful moments or all the beautiful traits of your loved one you'll be able to cherish them with more joy and that will feel good to your body and the human body is such that there is a natural mechanism on so when something feel good your body will naturally try to recreate more of that and and this is the physiology and <laughs> Quality. and and accordingly as you recover and you can now uh, move, let's say you looking at the photos that in the past before you recover while you still suffering you would cry every time you look at certain photos now you're able to look at them with smile perhaps even laughter on something funny your body will recognize that and then say, oh, it's good to remember things. It's good to remember the loved one. It's good to remember the, 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 the time past and, and will help you subconsciously to you, but will help you to remember more. So if you notice that you start forgetting things or your loved one's grieving and noticing that you start forgetting things, you start forgetting things that you would want to remember, then, then one way to be able to remember better is to actually recover from your grief and release your pain. Now, what about if you actually want to forget things? Sometimes it's a relationship that in such a way that you say, you know what, I much rather not remember anything about this. The same way, when you are able to recover from the pain, the preoccupying pain, you'll be able, if you choose to, to forget as well to not remember anymore. Why? Because at this moment, if you are in pain that you're grieving, say from a, a, from a trauma earlier in your life, it's gonna haunting you. And a lot of time people say, yeah, it jumps to me at the most inconvenient time. It's jump, it come to me in my dream and all these things. That's because you are in so much pain and it's preoccupied you. On the other hand, when you're able to release that, when you're able to release the pain and recover from the grief, now your system is no longer traumatized by it and you'll be able to, re to not remember it anymore and to make peace with it, to be at ease with it and then to, min to minimize remembering any part of it that you don't want to remember. And so the answer, would I forget my loved one? The answer is no. Now, if you're what if what you want is to forget, the answer is if you want to forget, you do that by releasing your pain and recovering your grief. If you want to remember your loved one even more with more ease and joy, you do that by releasing your pain and recovering your grief. You are not going to forget anything that you don't want to forget as long as your system are not occupied by pain and grief and all the other emotions that come along with grief. If you have any question, feel welcome to message me directly on, on the comment below or message me directly at drtanforgrief at gmail.com. And if you find this video informative to you, Please do subscribe so you continue receiving updates and like this video. You're welcome to share it with anyone that you care about as well. And this is Dr. Burjit Tan with Joyful Reaches Beyond Grief. My heart goes out to you if you are experiencing pain and grief. And please know that it is absolutely possible using correct series of actions to be able to recover from your grief. Remember what you want to remember and not remember what you don't want to remember. And with that, I care very much about you. I look forward to, to see you again in the next video.